Okay, so welcome to your first day of digital training. Today we're going to go through a regular day at um, the new Rosenthal Detention Center. That's what a regular day is expected to look like. So uh, this is the maximum security unit. This used to be the former fourth floor of the old Dooley County um, Community Hospital, but then it was since closed in favor of a new um, Emory Hospital that's been opened around the corner. So here we are in the unit. Maximum security. You have different kind of inmates. Some inmates don't come on themselves. Some of them very rarely do, while others are just up here for protective custody. Either way, things are done a little differently. So right now, it is morning. We do have a little snow. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and get ready to do roll call, roll call to make sure all inmates are here. I'm gonna go in here. Okay, here we go. So of course, every morning, you do have to give everyone their medication. This medication is a pink one. Here is potion of poison. That's typically used sort of in a similar way you would use, um, yeah, it's kind of used in the same way how you would use tear gas or even, yeah, it just depends. So it's, it's non-lethal. Um, you don't, carry the potion of decay because that's lethal you don't want to use lethal you only use that like say it depends on who you're dealing with here's your stick so we're creative that's why it can break the floor but usually you know stick you hit the inmate with and you're good this is just you know typically the guide everyone so Let's go ahead and give a wake up warning. Make sure everyone is out of bed. Okay. As you can see, everyone is out of bed. They stand at the foot of the bed to be counted. On this side, Make sure everyone's in their cell. Make sure there are no cells that are supposed to be occupied. So how you gonna check to make sure they're all awake? Really, it depends where you are, what ward. So this is why that's your first check. You're gonna check to make sure that there's no no security risks. Right here is basically protective custody. Let's go ahead and turn the lights on because it is daytime. So it's time for everyone to get up, go about their regular day. And this is just our, one of the sample cells. So you see how the cells on this floor, you have glass, you have a glass wall so that you can see in. This is what we call maximum visibility. So some of these cells you'll see bars here, arranged here, here in the bed. And that's pretty much it. 
Then you have bars over windows and that's it. So let's go ahead and turn the other sets of lights on. Okay, so now, first thing first, we're going to go back and check the manifest. Okay. Now that all the villagers are up, they're going to go ahead and open the door so that they can go ahead and exit their cell for a while. So you see how the arrangement works? All doors can be controlled from a one switch. You do not need to any longer operate each individual door. That's no longer necessary. All the doors can be operated from that switch at the end of the hall. This is what one of the regular cells look like. This is a uniform. So for this first part of the day, villagers are allowed, so what they're allowed to do, they're allowed to wander around so they can choose whether or not they want to go in or out or what they would like to do. One thing that is compulsory though is that everyone takes medication. Because you don't know what has happened during the night. So that's why medication is so important. One thing um, I do not like about this particular facility is really the fact that it's not direct supervision. There's a lot of corners, like for example, you can't see if someone's standing right here. You're not going to see them until you're right here. There's not enough reaction time with, the, with this setup. This is pretty much the oldest setup when it comes to a facility. But that's kind of um, what happens. So now what I'm gonna do? Start searching some some cells. Start. Sh I am going to start searching some cells. These fields just really they really pack lights. But then they're the green nitwit villagers, so that's why, you know, it's part of the reason why they're here. They're not allowed to be lazy and don't want to work, and they do it anyway, so that's why they end up in Rosenthal Detention Center. The more serious ones, they go downtown the city of Melchizedek. 
So this jail is more regional. There are new buildings because this is converted from an old hospital. So there are new buildings being converted. Built, I mean, that would accommodate more higher security inmates. These gates are here. As sometimes inmates would open these doors somehow. So we have an issue here. Apparently they're not complying, so... There's a few things I could do. Okay, so I'm going to send some of my winged friends in.
Lockout now, everyone is out of their cells. This time of day, it's lockout. So you see how they're still back here fighting? So I'm going to have to use... The lingering potion of harming or even decay. I'll have to use decay because that's the type of situation we're dealing with. You do not want to be near it. Thank <laughs> you. 
And that's why we call it lethal. the worst mob you could think of um probably a evoker yeah that's the worst one worst one out there is an evoker so if you have an evoker that's acting up this is what you should do First thing first, always get a snow golem. You build a snow golem with snow. The head. Okay, so with that being said. Now this evoker is going to start choking now. See how he's twitching violently in the chair? Each dosage is 30 seconds. Now, if the evoker does, in fact, you know, survive the lethal force, then you would issue a potion of healing. But if it doesn't, let's say if it attacks another snow golem. Then you would issue one. And then issue two. This is usually going to result in 45, 40 seconds of the potion. The lethal dose is 50 seconds. And that's how that works. So let's practice the lethal dose. No damage, nothing. This is how it's issued. One. And then two.